Welcome guys to Dancing with Tech. Today, we're gonna be talking about the Sega Genesis Mini. Also, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and like and leave a comment behind. Let's go. It came out in the United States in October 29th, 1988. And then centuries later, Sega themselves came out with their own miniature console. I'm not talking about AT games or at games, whatever you want to call it. Sega, the authentic company, they came with their own mini version years later to provide the system in September 19, 2019. Like three days before my brother's birthday, which is September 22nd. Wow. So I remember my brother and I getting this black shiny device one day as a surprise. I don't think it was for Christmas. Yeah. I don't think it was for Christmas, but I remember it was back in 1995 after we came back from Germany. So yeah, I don't remember it was Christmas. Anyways, Sonic 1 and Arts of Beast was the first two games I actually played on the Sega Genesis. So I remember those two games specifically because it was like a sense of accomplishment to be on. So I'm gonna name you 12 of my favorite games on the mini console that I truly adore. Cause I adore a lot of Sega games, but it's only like 12 of them that I really, really bonded with growing up as a child. Uh, this quarter size system is already becoming my favorite mini console. So why Sega? Why? So let's talk about this ultra of games that have packed in this console. Let's start with Ultra Beast. So Ultra Beast, like I said a few minutes ago, was the first game that I ever beaten. It was really cool. I really enjoyed it. And the thing that's very fascinating to me was to have my character turn into a creature, into a wolf, into a dragon, into a tiger, into a bear. It was just like so unique. And it was like, why I can't transform? Why I can't get no orbs or anything of that nature? Because I really had turned into like a dragon or that bear. But hey, I was a kid then and I kind of wish I still could turn into. I mean, come on, guys. Who would want to transform to like a creature be fun? Anyway, I remember beating that game. It was just like, wow, the end is pretty cool and everything. But Sonic 1 was a challenge. Had some difficult levels like Marvel Zone. I remember trying to jump over the fire, then you got a fire pit shooting at you, and you getting hit by and falling back into the level and dying. Yeah, that was kind of frustrating. And then Star, like Starlight Zone, was pretty tough. And Scrap Brain, which was a fire level in Sonic One, we had to fight Dr. Robotnik. That was tough in itself. But I remember when I beat it, it was just like this brave great sense of accomplishment. I remember beating it on a Sunday. I was super excited, so I really enjoyed it. I beat it right before we had to go to school the next day. And Street Fighter, Street Fighter 2 was also a second game. And that game, it was really fun. Me and my brother sat together and played it. But it was interesting because, you know, you need a six button controller to play that game. I kind of wish that Mini was packed with at least one six button controller or whatever. Anyways, but it was interesting playing and fighting game with three buttons. And it became easier when my mom actually got me and my brother a six foot controller. So after that, it was a whole different experience. Not to mention fighting games, let's talk about Eternal Champions. Eternal Champions was another game I truly adore on Sega. It was fun, it was awesome. They had like a lot of hidden finishers in there, or stage retires, what you want to call it. It was pretty cool because um, you had to be like different positions and do certain moves to interact with the bad guy for someone for on the fire. So I'm pretty sure if, if me and my brother played today, we haven't found a finish. So you probably have to go on YouTube. I know I went on YouTube look they're like, I didn't even have this hit the game. But it was really fun. Sonic 2 is another game I really adore. Also with Sonic 2, one of my favorite levels was Sky Chase. Like when I heard that game, the music, and the airplane, it was like, wow. So, Sonic 2 is a really great game that I'm glad that's on a Sega Mini. 
Also, you have Mickey Mouse Castle of Illusions and Mickey Mouse World of Illusions. I remember playing both of them for the first time, and I really enjoyed both of them. I, I want to say World of Illusions is kind of just a little more my favorite than Castle of Illusions, but they both were some really great Mickey Mouse games. And I was very surprised that was included in the console. I was like, wow. Because I was kind of thinking, if I had to mom my sister, I would add that in. And let's not forget about Earthworld Gym. Earthworld Gym was a hot mess. That game was crazy. It was fun. It was weird. Kind of like how I am. <laughs> then you got Streets of Rage 2. Um, that game was pretty cool too. That was like that was definitely one of my top beat 'em up type games back in the day, other than Spider-Man Maximum Carnage. <laughs> um, one of my favorite characters was Skate. Uh, he was pretty cool. I liked doing his little like kicking moves and stuff like that. And then you have Golden Axe. Golden Axe was fun. It was cool. And I'm gonna tell you something. So like recently, me and my fiance, we was playing Golden Axe 2 together on a single just mini. And she died, she didn't hit the continuation button. So I got stuck with a hard difficulty. So I'm looking at her like, are you serious? Are you serious? And she's like, well, uh, I don't know. I was like, okay, whatever. And then you got number 11, Toe Jam or Earl. That game was weirder than Earth Run Jam. Like, I don't know, I, just, I can't really explain that game. I mean, I played it a lot, me and my brother. We laughed about it, we thought it was weird and funny, but whatever, it was cool though. Also, Com Comic Zone was another game that we both really adore, me and my brother. That was a cool game, I thought it was fascinating to play a game in the comic book and then watch the artists draw the characters and stuff. This should definitely make that game for the modern consoles like on the Nintendo Switch. Hmm. But now, some of the games I wish that was on the Sega Genesis Mini, is Sonic 3 and Sonic Knuckles lock on. I mean, I guess due to life sync issues with Michael Jackson and stuff, they couldn't put the game on it, but man, God, I really want to play that again. And you got um, Mortal Kombat 2. You know, Mortal Kombat 2 was magnificent when it came out. It was one of the darkest 2D Mortal Kombat games of that generation. And I just kind of wish Surprisingly, they added, you know, they, they had Eternal Darkness. And then you have um, Global Gladiators with Mac. And I can't think of the other guy's name. But it was Global Gladiators when you see Ronald Badano. And that was a pretty cool game. And the Adams Family. And it, it, it should have added Adams Family. But that's like another second game I played um, during my childhood that I really enjoyed. Now, let's talk about emulations. Now, the emulation on the system is. It's great. It looks pretty really good. It's well performed. I mean, the emulation is, is top notch. The emulation is on par with the Super Nintendo and the Nintendo Classic on systems. And I mean, I can't really say anything negative about it. Now you may see like a little flickering and stuff in graphics, but if I'm not mistaken, I, I think that's how the actual game was too. Uh, I'm not sure, like on, on one of the Sonic, I think it was on Sonic 2, how it kind of looked. I don't know, like a little glitchy thing. But I mean, it's not a deal breaker. I mean, it's whatever. I mean, it definitely, definitely looks way better than the crappy emulation that the PlayStation 1 Mini is. I mean, PlayStation 1 Mini is terrible. I don't even know what it was thinking. Um, other than not having a six foot controller, uh, this mini console is almost perfect. I mean, it's to me, it sets a new standard with the mini console because you got top notch emulation and it also is teaching Nintendo to add more games because you know, Nintendo had like 20 games or 20 something games, it was in the 20s, but Sega gave us. Uh, 40 games, like for a really nice price. And then also it's definitely teaching PlayStation to put more effort into the disgusting emulations. The emulation was just flat out disgusting. Let's talk about the meatloaf. Let's talk about the price. How much the thing really costs? Now retail price is $79.99, which is a pretty good deal considering you get 40 something games you get uh, the Tetris game that's never been seen on Sega Genesis or Maple's Limited. 
um, get two controllers, and 40 games. I mean, look at how much the, um, the Nintendo and the uh, Super Nintendo Classic cost. You know, but I feel like you get more for your money with the Sega Genesis Mini. I mean, they really went in detail with the system. But if you really want to get the system at a good rate, you can always check out Amazon, eBay, or wait for like good sales. Because like this past Black Friday, they had a Sega Genesis Classic for like $59.99 or $49.99. Depends where you went to. If you went to Best Buy, Walmart, GameStop, you know, they was marking it down $30 cheaper. Which is good for someone who actually got it cheaper because you could turn around and buy one of those six button controllers for $19.99 for Amazon. Uh, I'll definitely drop that in the link below. But overall, I get a system on A plus plus plus. And which is good because Sega did say and they sell well with the Sega Genesis Mini, they could come up with the Dreamcast Mini. So I really hope so.